Welcome to another Lion's Table. May the Prince, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. 2 Thessalonians verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 16. There is power in the name of Jesus. Reading from 2 Thessalonians 1.12. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you are assembled and I am with you in spirit and the power of our Lord Jesus is present. 1 Corinthians 5.4. John 20, verse 31. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Amen. By believing that you may have life in his name. Reading from Ephesians 1, 18 through 22. I ask that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know the hope of his calling, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and the surpassing greatness of his power to us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion in every name that is named, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. And God put everything under his feet and made him head over everything for the church. Jesus Christ is head over everything, and there is power in his name. His name is above every name. He will break every chain. Today's church has forgotten this truth or has never really known it. Chains are an obvious symbol of imprisonment. In physical terms, they restrict us. They hold us down and back and signify our captive state. In spiritual terms, they do more or less the same. While many of us won't experience physical chains, we're by no means immune to the impact of spiritual chains, which harms our spiritual growth. These kinds of shackles are just as unmissable and detrimental to our freedom because they affect our behavior, our outlook, and our faith. Indeed, the Bible features numerous accounts of physical chain breaking, but it is also full of stories about people who had their spiritual chains broken by the Lord. These types of chains manifested in various ways, demons, sickness, sin, but these biblical stories aren't just documented so that we know what Jesus was able to do for people that followed him in the past. They were also to show us what he can do for us today. Jesus comes to set us free and destroy the chains that bind us. The modern day chains that we may experience can come in a variety of forms. It might be an addiction, a lazy attitude, or a failure to forgive. We can identify such spiritual shackles by assessing whether whatever it is weakens us, restricts our freedom, and prevents us from walking more closely with Jesus. Amen. And I just want to add to that, I think fear, too, is a chain. And boy, are so many people are bound by that today. And fear causes a lot of other problems with our personalities, too. We can read in Mark 5, 8. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell at his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. 
Acts 16, 25 through 26. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chain came loose. Psalm 116, verse 16. Truly I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. People, Jesus has the power to break every chain. But more important, he has broken it. On Calvary, he broke the chains of sin. And when he was resurrected, he broke the chains of death. There are no more chains that have power over us unless we give them a place. Amen. Far too many of us out there are still in chains. Chains of the past, chains of the present, chains of fear, as was just mentioned, chains of pride, chains of self-sufficiency, chains of lust. There's the so... Chains of, of fear of the unknown, which cr fear alone creates anxiety, anger, and a lot of other things. These are all chains. Let's put it this way. If we're not behaving like Jesus, we haven't reached the point where we are chainless. And I don't believe any of us have gotten to that point yet. And we're not going to get there until the day he comes and delivers us from this fleshly body. But we are supposed to Work on that. We are supposed to work with God in, in in letting him break those chains. And part of the way of breaking those chains is acknowledging that you have those chains in the first place. And once you acknowledge that you have those chains, then and only then will cry, can Christ break them. And so many of us simply need to acknowledge that we have chains and bring them before Jesus and say, Lord, you broke my chain at Calvary. I, I, I rebuke these chains. I know that I've lived with them. They become a part of my life. I don't even think about them anymore, but I know I have them. And I'm asking you, Lord, to manifest the breaking of the chains in my life. And you know what? He will do that. And he's done it for many others. And as we get into the last days here, folks, we're going to need to have these chains that are holding us back, that are delaying our blessing or interfering with our ministries. We might even realize it broken. And we all have at least one chain that needs to be broken so that we can function and operate in the full power of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us with this Lions Table. We hope this has been a blessing to you. And we always invite you to join us again next time.